it's summertime, or at least it is in the Northern Hemisphere, and summer is when it's time to head out of school and let all that knowledge fall out of your brains. But we here at Dorky Geeky Nerdy are going to help keep your brains sharp over the summer break. Hey there, this is your host, Brian Rollins, and over this summer, Dorky Geeky Nerdy will be featuring summer school episodes every Saturday, in addition to our usual Wednesday episodes. While our Wednesday episodes will still focus on sci-fi, fantasy, and other geeky pursuits, Saturdays will be for more academic topics. This first summer school episode is all about mathematics. As always, we'll have three rounds of 10 questions each. Each round is harder than the last. If you're looking for ways to score your game, point your browser at dorkygeekynerdy.com slash rules. If you're a teacher and want to use this in your classroom, the rules and score sheets on that page will be a huge help. Okay, class, settle down. It's time to begin. The Dorky Round Number 1. What is the only even prime number? Two. All other prime numbers, numbers divisible by one in itself, are odd. Number two. When you divide a chart into four sections, what are those sections called? Quadrants. Number three. This field of study, focusing on the relationship between angles and side lengths of right angles, can be taught almost in its entirety in high school. That'd be trigonometry. Number four. This operation in calculus uses an infinite sum to find the area under a curve. Integration Number 5. Using standard orders of operations, what's the last operation you perform on an equation? Addition and Subtraction Number 6. This is the mnemonic to aid in remembering which trigonometric function is which. Some of you may remember it from high school. So, ka, toa. Number 7. The Cartesian coordinate system is named after which French mathematician? René Descartes. Number 8. What is the measure of a right angle expressed in degrees? Ninety degrees. Number nine. In the nineteen thirty nine film The Wizard of Oz, the Scarecrow says the sum of the square roots of any two sides of an isosceles triangle is equal to the square root of the remaining side. Which famous theorem did he get wrong in this quote? The Pythagorean Theorem Number 10 Follow-up question What correction needs to be made for the Scarecrow statement to be true? He should have referred to a right triangle, not an isosceles triangle. 
the Geeky Round. Number 1. 10 followed by 100 zeros is called what? A Google. Number 2. Which field of math is named for a mispronunciation of an Arabic phrase meaning reunion of broken parts? Algebra. Number 3. Parabolae, hyperbolae, circles, and ellipses are all part of which class of relations? Conic functions. Number four. This broad category can be subdivided into studies of group, rings, and fields. Algebra. Number five. To be considered a function, a relation must pass this test. The vertical line test. Number 6. To fully study this field, one will need to be able to write in at least four colors. Topology. Number seven. This term is used to describe a detailed study of real numbers, often being used to justify calculus. Real analysis. Number eight. This number is denoted by a lowercase j in electrical engineering and a lowercase i in virtually every other context. The square root of negative 1. Number 9. What function created by Paul Dirac accidentally spawned the theory and study of distributions. The Dirac Delta Function. Number 10. Which branch of math deals exclusively with terms of a single variable with the exponent 1 or constants? Linear Algebra. Okay, let's take a quick break for the book of the week. This time around, we're recommending The Math Book by Clifford A. Pickover. Math's infinite mysteries and beauty unfold in this follow-up to the best-selling The Science Book, beginning millions of years ago with ancient ant odometers and moving through time to our modern-day quest for new dimensions, it covers over 250 milestones in mathematical history. Among the numerous delights readers will learn about as they dip into this inviting anthology, cicada-generated prime numbers, magic squares from centuries ago, the discovery of pi and calculus, and the butterfly effect. Each topic gets a lavishly illustrated spread with stunning color art, along with formulas and concepts, fascinating facts about scientists' lives, and real-world applications of the theorems. You can find a link to this or any other book recommendation at dorkygeekynerdy.com slash book. Okay, kids, recess is over. Back to class. The Nerdy Round Number 1. 
A number where each number is equal to the sum of the two previous numbers is called what? A Fibonacci sequence. Number two. What is the mathematical name for the number or hashtag sign? An octothorpe. Number three. Though known as Arabic numerals, the numbers used in mathematics originated in what country? They originated in India, around 700 AD. Number four. Who is the most prolific mathematician in history, publishing over 50 papers per year when the average mathematician published five? Leonard Euler. Number five. Which mathematician's 13 books of the elements birthed the modern approach to mathematics? Euclid of Alexandria. Number six. Which function involving partial differential equations allows us to extend the definition of the factorial to fractions and negative numbers? The gamma function. Number seven. What is the name of the line between the numerator and the denominator in a fraction. It's called the vinculum. Number eight. What Hebrew letter is used to denote a specific size of infinity? An Aleph. Number nine. What critical component of Newton's formulation of calculus was not formally verified until Abraham Robinson published Non Standard Analysis in 1966? The existence of infinitesimals. Number 10. What mathematical object, similar to but different from a matrix, is needed to define the topology of a non-Euclidean space? The metric tensor. That's the bell class. When you add up your points, be sure to show your work. Don't forget to study for next week. By the way, here's a hint for next week's class. Charles Darwin is considered the father of modern what? I hope you enjoyed this new adventure in trivia podcasting. It does mean twice as many episodes per week, which several people have requested. We'll see how well I manage the new load. A huge shout out to Blaine Dowler, who wrote nearly all of the questions for this episode. He hosts a variety of very geeky podcasts over at Bureau42.com. I'll drop a link on the show notes for this episode. They are worth a listen. He goes into some insane depth on topics like mathematics, X-Files, and much, much more. So, to sum up, I'm your host, Brian Rollins. Thanks for listening. <laughs>